a very popular topic in the last week, week and a half, and we haven't talked about it for no other reason than we just haven't talked about it. Have you been following, I guess, what started with Ariel Hawani doing an interview with Tony Khan and then led to Ariel Hawani talking about his frustrations with the interview and then a lot of backlash all of a sudden against Ariel Hawani for saying these things? <laughs> Have you followed any of this? I, I haven't been following them. They, you know, they, they don't need to turn me in. I haven't been following them. I was minding my own business. They passed me by. Um, and all I know is Ariel Hawani, obviously, is, um, is what you would term a mainstream level sports reporter, right? He does MMA. He's, he, he's not a guy that does a wrestling site or, you know, just uh, confines himself to reporting on wrestling. He's a sports guy, right? He's been on ESPN or what? I never listen to him, but I don't listen to anybody. But he's recognized. I've heard the name a million times. Arguably, he's the most recognized MMA journalist out there. And he's done a lot of things over the years. I believe the show this interview was on was the MMA Hour. So that tells you where the priorities for the program yeah. are. But he's always been a wrestling fan. Well, yes, but I'm saying it's not that he's just not some jack-off that comes to their media scrums because they're, you know, doing fan sites and are willing to stay up until 2 o'clock in the morning and applaud the wrestlers to be able to be a part of it. He's a legitimate sports journalist. And I saw that he said that the interview that he did with Tony apparently was the crummiest one he'd ever done, and, and I don't know why. I just heard him say that. So are we investigating this now today? Well, we've been working on that. I have not heard this either, but I had Jace Nakarado pull some timestamps and pull some clips that we should play here to explain Ariel Hawani's response to this. So this is from Tony Khan's appearance. I believe it would be on the MMA Hour. Oh, no, excuse me. It's on the Ariel Hawani Show. I want to make sure I get this right. Oh, he's got his own show. He's got his own show. He's a big deal. And here's his interview with Tony Khan. The first thing Jace recommends we play is right here at the start, the intro. Let's go to this. I have wanted to do this interview for quite some time, and I'm delighted that we're here with Tony Khan, a man who has more jobs than I can count. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how there's enough time in his day, but he gets it done. Of course, you know him from AEW. You know him from the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know him from Fulham. Those aren't his only jobs, by the way, but as far as AEW All Elite Wrestling is concerned, who are celebrating a very important milestone three-year anniversary on this Wednesday. A huge deal for them since the launch of Dynamite three years ago on TNT. He's the president, the chief executive, the general manager, the executive producer, the head booker, probably <laughs> some other stuff as well for AEW. He's the great Tony Khan. Tony, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you for having me on. How are you, Ariel? I'm doing great. And can I just say, I'm very delighted that you're here speaking to me. Because if I could break the fourth wall, I thought you didn't like me for a long time, Tony. I felt like uh, I felt like we had heat, and I didn't know why, and it kind of hurt my feelings. No, not at all. Quite the opposite. I just uh, want people to clear the interviews they do with us, <laughs> uh, and you know, it's not nothing to do with you. But I really like, and since then, I think we've done a lot of great stuff in collaboration with you. Um, but it's my first time getting to visit with you in person, even though I think we've been in some arenas at big events at the same time. And uh, now we get to talk together and yes. I'm really excited about it. So I, as somebody who enjoys your show and enjoys your work, uh, this is fun for me. Well, they've certainly started off at each other's throats. I mean, I've never, God damn, they sound like the Arabs and the Israelis. What the, no, how could this interview possibly go south to be the worst one he's ever done when they've spent the past three minutes blowing each other? But again, the very first thing he says after, reading back to him all of his jobs is I thought you hated me. <laughs> and then he has to convince him. No, no, I didn't hate you. Which if he did or didn't, it's the first thing he throws at him. It kind of sets a tone. Well, I, I thought it was all in the, in the, maybe I'm just harder hearted than most people, but I thought that was all good natured, spirited banter amongst two grown adult men. And you would hope so, but I guess maybe, and, he, and a reason why he probably thought that Tony didn't like him is because he's the one that they did the interview that didn't get cleared, that blah, 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 that started a lot of trouble. Right. And again, we're playing that because of the way things went. If things went happily and they walked off hand in hand, <laughs> people wouldn't be talking about the intro of the interview. But here is Ariel Hawani asking Tony about MJF's contract. 
And if Tony was comfortable with it, let's go to this. Uh, could I ask, you know, you mentioned MJF, my good friend. Um, I, I think, and I've said this on many different platforms, uh, I think he's one of, if not the best thing going in pro wrestling today, regardless of promotion. Um, I'm, I'm a huge admirer of his work. Uh, he reminds me of, you know, prime 1980s Roddy Piper, uh, the way he conducts himself, just the mic work, everything about him. A few months ago when we did that interview and, and even afterwards, like when he's talking about his contract, and now I think you've done a nice job of kind of blending that into the program as well. And it's stuff that fans, especially of my generation, like we like that stuff and we're not sure what's a work, what's a shoot. He's calling you a mark, all that stuff. Initially, were you comfortable with him talking about – because in the business historically, we don't know when contracts are up. Were you comfortable with all of that? I this is one of those things that I uh, don't want to talk about, but I do think uh, I agree with everything you let off with. I think he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. It's amazing how much he's accomplished already at such a young age. He's a great talent, and I have uh, so much respect for that part of what he does. And, you know, you compared him to Roddy Piper. I think um, I grew up idolizing Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, Chris Jericho, and, you know, he's got the – you know, really uh, some of the qualities of some of my all-time favorite pro wrestlers. So definitely agree with all that stuff. And now to have him uh, on the show on a regular basis, it's tremendous. And like, I right, I'm going to stop it there. Cause apparently he why, goes on for another they, couple of minutes. Why did they do things. all that stuff? If Tony didn't have a story set to tell afterwards. Yeah. You know, MJF, he's good and he knows he's good and he thinks he's even better than he is. And he tried to hold the whole company hostage. And I was in there in the negotiating room with him for hours and days. We stayed up till four o'clock in the morning one time trying to hammer something out. He's an important part of the program, but not if all he cares about is himself and how he gets ahead financially. And it's all about him. He's a head case. He's somebody we're going to have to monitor closely. There's no telling what he might do. But yeah, all that stuff, that was the most trying time of my life. But I wanted to make sure that we've got the best wrestlers, even if they're not the best human beings, for our fans on the program. Shit like that. <laughs> Go ahead. Even if he said the same thing, but he didn't lead with, I don't want to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's how a politician does it. I don't want to talk about it. A politician doesn't go, you know, I don't want to talk about that, so I'm going to say all this other stuff. They just do it. Any issue oh. with the question? No, that's what everybody was wanting to hear, because that's the only interesting thing they've done in the last three or four months, is what was going on there. And then they kind of let that fucking twist in the wind for a while, but... Uh, no, he's he's a journalist. He's asking questions. I assume that he figured when Tony agreed to do this thing that he was going to give him some kind of answers, even if they were horseshit. Well, here's Ariel attempting to follow up after Tony went on for a couple minutes after that, talking about different things, but never obviously answering any direct questions about MJF or his contract. Let's go to this. Could I just follow up if I may? Like the reason why I'm so drawn to MJF is because he talks about the side of the game. You know, you're a football guy. We love the business side of sports, right? Free agency, transfers, deals. This I think is brilliant. So I'm just curious, why don't you want to talk about it? Like why <laughs> this I think is part of his appeal. And I think it's great for the storyline, his spot in the company. He's going to be a free agent in a year and a half or so. And you're talking about it on the on the broadcast as well. Yeah, but I don't see how, you know, going into detail about it other than talking about his wrestling and what he brings to the show. And of course, uh, you know, everything he brings, his great promos, his great ideas. There's a lot there. But, uh, you know, I think you're you're starting when if you want to get into the contracts and that aspect of it with me. Um, oh same as my other jobs. If you wanted to talk about the contracts at Fulham. I would probably be kind of vague. I would say, like, I really like the player. I think it's good Tony, business we're doing. And, Tony, uh, lie. <laughs> Work. <laughs> Paint the verbal picture that MJF is a fucking heel. And he's a self-absorbed narcissist that's trying to take over your company and wanted to take all your money and you're trying to avoid that. And at the same time, keep him in, under control on your roster work. 
And just uh, I think it's a great transfer that we're making and we're doing a smart move for the club. But, you know, you, you're getting into the numbers and stuff. Rarely will I do that. Uh, when he was on my show, he just said that he came to terms with you on, on a deal, but not an extension. Can I ask if that was accurate? Yeah, I, I again, I don't want to comment on what okay. we did, but I think that I, he's been well compensated, and I'm glad to have him on the shows, and uh, he's like a huge part of it now, so it's great. Okay, so what do you think of the MJF? Again, there are other ways to handle it. Even if you don't want to lie, there are other ways to handle it so that it doesn't come across as the longest non-answer ever. But, it, but it's not it's not lying, it's working. Because this these things did happen, so now put a spin on them to reflect the way you want people to view the participants on your program. And MJF held everybody's feet to the fire until he got what he wanted because he's talked himself over and he's fought himself over and the people want to see him. But God damn, it's hard to deal with this guy. And we had to go through serious negotiations to get him back on the program. But at the same time, I had him tied up. He don't want to talk about that. He couldn't just run around free because I had a claim to him contractually. We had to work out something that benefited both of us. And now, unfortunately, to do my job as president and chief cook and bottle washer of AEW, I had to give this guy a lot of money to get him back on the program, but that was also to make sure that my fans get the best program and he wasn't about to go anywhere else. Maybe he will in a year and a half, or maybe he won't. We'll just say something. Instead, we get Chuck Barris saying he's in the CIA, and then the CIA says yes. we can't comment uh, one way or the other. <laughs> well, here is Ariel asking Tony about the Labor Day all-out press scrum fallout. Oh, boy. Let's go to this. What was going through your mind at that press conference Labor Day? I mean, I was just trying to watch you as a punk who I know quite well was, you know, saying what he had to say. I was dying to know what was just happening in your mind in that moment as all that was unfolding. Could you share any of that with us? I cannot share any of that with you. <laughs> but I Were you upset? You asked. I can't talk okay. about it, but I uh, appreciate, you know, and understand that you had to ask. Fair enough. C could I ask what is the state of your relationship with CM Punk? You can ask, but I, I appreciate oh. it, you ask, but I cannot answer that question. Okay, fair enough. C could I ask what's the state of his relationship with AEW? Like, is he is he going to come back? Is he suspended? I think there's a lot of uh, intrigue, a lot of questions regarding where he sits right now. I know he's nursing an injury, but is he going to come back or is that up in the air? You can ask, but I, okay. I cannot answer that and comment, my friend. Fair enough. And and what about the other particulars Fair involved enough. in the alleged incident afterwards? Can you comment on their status with the company? Are they are they back at least? I am, like, it's the whole thing. I just the can't whole thing talk, you can't about talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I, I, but enough. it's but you know I I understand. I had to ask. I understand. I understand what you got to do. Could could I? <laughs> okay, let's stop it there. You know, I've never heard. <laughs> I've never heard anybody plead the fucking Fifth Amendment on a goddamn uh, sports interview. I refuse to answer on the grounds it might incriminate me. On the advice of my counsel. That's all I had to say. My legal team has instructed me not to talk about this. I know you have to ask. I wish I could answer, but they've said that for a variety of reasons, and it may end up being nothing, I can't really say anything right now, but I I'm sorry. I wish I could. When I can, I'll talk to you. <laughs> right? Is that all you have to say? The, well, uh, again... If he wasn't going to talk about anything that he was asked about, which is the things that you would expect that Tony Khan would be asked about, the things that everybody's interested in, what happened at the press scrum, what's the fallout with the participants, what's going on with MJF, all those questions would be the first question any legitimate reporter would want to ask, and he's not answered any of them, so why do you agree to do the interview? Not exactly. I mean, sure. I know when they do the media scrum, it's, you know, four or five people from California and a couple of miscellaneous newsletter editors, and they just asked, oh, what did you think about the flying wombat move that Twinkle Toes did 37 minutes into his epic 94 minute contest with Pockets? They just put out a press release announcing Jericho's extension. It's not like the idea of asking about contracts or extensions or status on the roster, if they're suspended or not, is off the table. 
Yeah, no, you just have to make sure that you're asking about one of the people on the roster who wants their deal publicized and wants to talk about how long they're signed for and how much they're going to be doing in the company. Well, let's get another one here, Jim. Here's Ariel Hawani asking about Soraya. Uh, you recently signed a uh, page now known as Soraya, her real name, right? Uh, could I ask, is she going to wrestle for AEW or is she going to be more of a, an authority figure, or just, you know, a manager, if you will? Well, I don't want to say what Soraya's role is going to be yet, but I think that's one of those uh, stay tuned to okay. Dynamite you know, tonight <laughs> and Rampage every okay. weekend to find out uh, what the plan is. But uh, Soraya is tremendous, and it's great having her in AEW. She's a, such a recognizable star all over the world, and what a great signing for us in the U.K., where AEW is by far the number one television wrestling company in the world. Uh and I have I would be remiss if I didn't bring up that point that now AEW Dynamite on Friday nights has gotten moved up uh, and we've got a big run of shows now where Dynamite is actually starting on Friday at 9 p.m. Of course, it's Wednesdays here in America. Yeah. Wednesday so Dynamite's night tonight, on Friday tonight. in the UK? It's on Friday. At, uh, now it's been moved up because the ratings have been so strong. We just had our biggest viewership ever. It was We've topped it multiple times now. We had the Quake by the Lake set a new record and... Uh, then we had this huge opportunity that they moved Grand Slam up two hours. He was asked about Soraya. I just want yeah, to remind you. Yeah, and, and you know, <laughs> Ariel was right there. One of the most recognizable faces around the world. Imagine if she still had the face she had five years ago, because a lot of people oh, recognize on. that one. Come on. <laughs> I'm just, you know, you got you got a lot of recognizable faces right there with that girl. Well, he didn't answer that, and it doesn't seem like he's going to come to an answer. Let's go to the next one here. Him being asked about Bray Wyatt. Let's go to this. Uh, can I ask you about one? Not sure if you can respond, but uh, you know, I wouldn't be me if I if I didn't try. Uh, I thought when Wyndham Rotunda was let go from WWE that he would have been a natural for you guys. Obviously, he hasn't signed with anyone. We don't know. There's rumors he might be coming back. Did you ever have a conversation with Wyndham or his management about coming to AEW? I don't want to talk about like people I haven't haven't talked to. He's a great guy. Uh, okay. I think I've said this in interviews before, so I wouldn't be giving anything away. I think I see he was at Chris Jericho's birthday party. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I've never uh, talked to him about uh, that kind of a thing uh, in person or anything. So I, I uh, think he's a tremendous talent and uh, you know, I, and I didn't want him working here. The <laughs> same as I said before, I wouldn't want to like comment on stuff with, you know, people, specific negotiations or who we totally understand. Um, it- I don't want to comment on stuff with people. What does he want to comment on? Uh, on the ratings of Dynamite in the UK on Friday nights at nine o'clock, apparently. What are the WWE's ratings in the UK? Now we have to look into that. Uh, I have more audio depending on how much you want to hear from this one. But what are your thoughts overall so far on the overall nature of it? Ariel Hawani's role? I can see if I was Ariel Hawani, how I would be getting a little frustrated at having this guy on my show who is spending all his time going, well, I can't talk about that, but I can plug my TV time. Um, You know, I, so I can see where he was kind of put out by the whole thing. All right, hold on. I'm fast forwarding because I'm reading through Jace's notes here. <laughs> and it seems like there's an amazing moment coming up. So let me go to 10835. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Ariel Hawani show. Ariel Hawani has his own YouTube channel. Check it out right now. Subscribe. He's worth it for this. Let's go to Ariel Hawani and Tony Khan. Um, c- can I ask, I think one of the biggest stories of the, the rest of, and, and I'll let you go in a moment. Uh, the biggest, oh, no, of- I, this is great. You're loving this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you, uh, are you jammed for time? I'm not, but, uh, I was told I you sit here and not talk no, to you not. all day. Uh, I drank this entire cup of coffee and this entire water. I want you might, can you hang on one second? Is oh, it going to okay, screw sure, you? Sure. Is this going to screw you in oh. post? No, no. It won't. <laughs> all right. You guys got this. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, he has muted himself now, Tony Khan. I was about to say, are we going to hear the piss? <laughs> They've sped up the tape. Ariel's just sitting there. Tony's taking a piss. <laughs> there was an empty chair. He's back. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Right. Yeah. Hey. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, I'll keep going. Um, 
So as we sit here today, I think one of the biggest stories, if not the biggest story as far as wrestling is concerned in 2022 was Cody Rhodes coming over to WWE. Did you try hard to keep him? I, I still can't almost believe that he, he let, I mean, he was part of the foundation of the company. Did you try hard to keep him? I can't, I, again, we're in the realm of stuff I can't talk about, but I have a ton of respect for Cody and uh, really like Cody a lot and uh, wish him the best in everything he's doing. Uh, Was it surreal for you to see him over there after, you know, being sort of in the trenches with him for three years? I can't talk about it. I definitely. Why uh, can't you talk about that? I don't want to, I, because I don't think it'll serve me well. And uh, (laughs) I do think he's he's great and have a ton of respect for him. And, uh, it, it says a lot about him that, you know, in a year where uh, Vince McMahon uh, well, I mean, from a, retires. From a wrestling standpoint. That, that, from a wrestling no, I'm business. not saying it's not. I think Cody moving is a huge story for, for the wrestling business. And I think it says a lot that in a year where uh, Vince McMahon comes back, and I was about to say before that Steve Austin came back and wrestled right. this year. So, and it says a lot and that uh, Cody what jumping is say? right there is one of the biggest <laughs> stories in pro wrestling. Say something. And, uh, <laughs> I have a lot of respect for Cody and like him a lot. All right, let's stop it there. I will just say for the record, I heard that there were mutual NDAs in place. Now, no one has said that. But does that does that prevent you from saying, you know what, here's the thing. I've always respected Cody's ability as a, as a wrestler, and I enjoyed working with him for the time that we were together. And I understand that sometimes people's priorities change somehow, and things happen, and I wish him the best, but we got to carry on as best we can. Instead of, I don't want to talk about that. What? <sighs> Should have asked about Brandy. That would have been an interesting answer. Should have asked Brandy about Tony. You see, I want to hear all these people just talk. Tell the truth. Just tell the truth. She, She's not a black belt. She's a black bitch. That was her quote, of course. And there are other things in this audio I'm not going to play for you. We could do it at a later time. But apparently... Ariel Hawani takes Tony to task a little bit for some of his comments about Nick Khan and WWE, and that's one of the things that people have honed in on, because I may be getting some of this wrong, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe Nick Khan was Ariel Hawani's agent. And of course, Ah. Ariel Hawani does have WWE people on his show, apparently he has had his voice used on their programming, so a lot of people are pointing to that and saying conflict of interest. To be honest, I don't know. But he takes Tony to task for Nick Khan. But that's all we're going to play from the Ariel Hawani, Tony Khan, one hour and 17 minute interview. Uh, Again, on the Ariel Hawani YouTube channel. Here's my TV time. Be sure to watch the TV show. But I can't. Now we found out where Tony Khan would be most valuable. If the United States ever gets in another foreign war, Tony Khan should be in charge of all the intelligence. Because no matter how he is interrogated or cross-examined, he's not going to spill the fucking beans. Nah, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter's the greatest of all time (laughs) in New York. He's the greatest at saying nothing and getting away with it. It's amazing. The most talented ever, Derek Jeter. But, well, you know, a lot of times people think it'd be like it is, but it do. But, you know, on the third time uh, is the charm on the court there on the field, and we're playing, and there you go. 